Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Bren Brews Week. My name is Pojo, and oh my goodness, it is time to be doing a deck that I've actually been really wanting to do for quite some time. This is our Invoke the Waystones Moment of Creation deck. A really, really fun Praxis archetype deck. We've got a very, 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 very tiny Justice Splash in here, and uh, we are just making it a really, really fun two-color Praxis sort of ramp deck with Invoke the Waystones as the payoff, or rather with a lot of cool 7 and 8 drops as the payoff and invoke the waystones as a way to access said payoff over and over and over again. Praxis decks have a really interesting thing going on with how they sort of access power. They tend to go very, very big, but they also tend to go very, very sort of uh, vanilla and like very, very large. So what will typically happen is you'll see like a very large 6-6 plus a card draw. You'll see a Great Kiln Titan being like a really, really huge 9-7 plus another card played off the top. And so like what can happen is that while you are able to just generate a lot of really, really big pressure and even draw more cards, you can still sometimes run out of juice against certain types of decks. Not so with Invoke the Waystones. When it comes down to Invoke the Waystones, you can play that card as much as you please. Uh, until, of course, your deck runs out and you have to uh, refresh it with either an Excavate or a Lumen Reclaimer, or preferably an Excavate into a Lumen Reclaimer. Um, but yeah, Invoke the Waystones gives us just a huge amount of card advantage and also access to some really, really powerful cards that can be very, very good to have. So we are going to be going ahead and rocking that, and uh, yeah, it should be a delightful, delightful time. So let's talk a little bit about how this deck works. First off, we do have, of course, four copies of Bren Chronicler of Ages, that 1-3 that gives us a really sizable amount of ramp when we're using cards like Seek Power, Torch, Find the Way, and uh, all of the other shenanigans that Bren is so particularly famous for. We are not running Seek Power in this deck, but we are running four Talir's Intervention and four Torches, both of which are really, really useful cards for stabilizing us in the early game and can really help us out in making th things just go very very smoothly we also have trail maker here for that uh, extra influence we want to get three fire and three time influence together very quickly for heart of the vault and four time influence together for invoke the waystones it's pretty easy to do um, we have not only the banners crests and seats available but we also have access to the secret pages the uh, trail maker the find the ways and all of that other sort of search stuff to make sure that we have the correct influence when all of that goes together, then we really get to do some really cool stuff. Uh, let's talk about that top end. So Sandstorm Titan, of course, first is the mid-range card that makes things eh, tied together. But we also have Part of the Vault at 6, which is your very, very standard way to make a Praxis deck just to have tons and tons of value. We have Claw of the First Dragon, a 4-4 four, four in Tomb that plays four random one-cost units. This is your Stabilizer. This is the card that most often saves you against any type of aggro deck and can really, really get you into position against a lot of mid-range decks where you can just stall them for days and days and days while you find bigger stuff and continue to place things off of your love with bias. The other thing that's really nice about Claw is that it is a 7-cost Relic, which comes in handy when it comes to Great Kiln Titan, who deals damage equal to Relic's costs to enemies. You can Great Kiln Titan a Power Stone or a Claw of the First Dragon or anything along those lines, you can do a huge amount of damage to your opponent, and the more Great Kiln Titans you have out, the more likely that turns into the burn combo that finishes the game. But Great Kiln Titan also does a similar job to Invoke the Waystones, which is to say it plays free cards every turn, and we're really, really excited about that, and it's a really, really great thing to hit off of Invoke the Waystones, because it just commands the board and does really impressive things. Finally, we have Moment of Creation. This card, of course, gives us two large Sentinels with strength and health equal to the number of spells in our void. We don't have to go incredibly spell-focused to make Moment of Creation work, because Invoke the Waystone will pitch cards into our void and give us a lot of spells in the void anyway. So you can frequently get some really big moments. Uh, 10 to 12 is really not uncommon. 5-5s five and 6-6s six are very, very common. And yeah, this card will generally stabilize us in a very good way. Also, the Sentinels are colorless, which is really important, because it means that we basically just don't have to deal with any sort of like annihilates or other things that the rest of the deck can be very very weak to. Uh, finally, we have A New Tomorrow, which plays the top 10 cards from your deck depleted. This gives us no shortage of awesome Invoke targets. It means we'll never hit power off of Invoke. And it also allows us to just basically play out all of the stuff that we draw off of Heart of the Vault, all of the stuff that we draw off of uh, Love of What Goliath plays, where we get a lot of free cards. Basically, all of the stuff in our hand that we're going to be sort of glutted on, New Tomorrow will allow us to play out in a really big, scary, exciting fashion. And that's a fun way to win the game. So uh, this one's not strictly necessary but in general this deck has like lots of unnecessary legendaries you can fill around with these numbers as much as you like to see exactly what it is you most want to play 
Uh, some other fixy type things. We have the torches and the Talir's interventions, of course. Those are really nice for bouncing Heart of the Vault. We also have Excavate to get the Heart of the Vaults back on top and to make sure that we have a way to save Lumen Reclaimer, of which there's only one in this deck. I don't agree with the uh, four Lumen Reclaimer setup, mostly because if Lumen Reclaimer is played out early because you are forced to play it and then it dies, then it becomes a, kind of a just big problem in your deck and actually has some anti-synergy with Invoke the Waystones. You very rarely need to play Lumen Reclaimer. Most of the time Invoke the Waystones will win you the game before you even need it. So this is just sort of the safety valve in case you greed completely out and your opponent still somehow isn't dead. So yeah, that's a, that's that thing. And then Bury the Past, we wanted a big six cost card that could kill relics and also do other things. And this is the uh, thing that we've got. So this is just a really good way to easily remove some particular thing and get rid of it for a good long time. So we'll keep that in mind and we'll see if this is going to be of any use. It is a one of at the moment and I don't think we're going to go any higher than that. But we can also run some other things. If you wanted to do bore, you can do that. Uh, any sort of fast spell effect like decay is pretty good. But in general, I felt like one attachment destruction, something flexible was where we wanted to be. All right, so that's it for the deck. Let's go ahead and play some games and uh, see how it goes. See you in a moment. Okay, Cope Mantis. I've got Common Cause, Praxis Banner, and Amber Waystone. That's a reasonable enough start. Find the Way also gives us extra influence and some things to do with Bren, so pretty into it. Alright, so we have Praxis Banner, Amber Waystone. <coughs> Probably play the Praxis Banner first. Then we'll play Amber Waystone, get the Bren out, and the Find the Ways will allow us to slowly ramp Bren until he deals with Bren. Which, we're totally fine with him killing Bren, we're fine with him not killing Bren. Either way is good with us. That's the advantage of Bren. If he uh, doesn't pay attention to it, then we definitely get to start ramping. If he does pay attention to it, then uh, that's one less removal card for the Fountain deck. Or the sort of removal pile deck. Okay, find the way here gets, uh, let's say, a fire. And we'll play that fire. And still have a little bit for Torch. We could also have found the way twice, but it's better to save the find the way so I can individually power up Bren and have myself a good time. Next, we'll find the way for a depleted uh, time, I think. And play ourselves a Sandstorm Oh, wow. All right. So we play this fire here, then Titan. Pull in plenty of power into our deck. We've got all the inputs we need. Uh, if we play the Depleted Time, then we will be able to Heart of the Vault. Not necessarily this turn. We're pretty close, so hopefully we'll get something cool off of that. That Feeding Time is totally fine, and there's our Invoke the Waystones. Let's see if we can play this. I'm pretty sure we can't. We have to play the Time Sigil that we drew, which leaves us with... Not quite a good enough option. I could have played the Depleted Time Sigil, played the Torch and invoked the Waste Towns, but I think we're fine for waiting. Um, and we'll hold the other Find the Way as well. Now at this point, Bren's looking pretty active, and uh, we're also getting into a very, very good invoke. Um... <laughs> okay, that's fine. I can work with that. We might want to double torch this 2-5 now that we're no longer looking for Bren targets. Uh, I think that actually feels pretty reasonable, seeing as this card can steal all sorts of goodies off the top of our deck, and we really don't want that to happen. Uh, I am one turn out for Invoke again, which is not great. Praxis Banner would almost fix that problem, but as it stands, we're just going to have to find a way for some justice. And then we'll Invoke next turn. Shadow Sigil gets him Black Sky Harbinger. That means he doesn't have a backlash or anything of that kind, so we'll just invoke. The Waystones hold we great power. Well, of the first dragon. Not bad for stabilization. Not greatly matched against Black Sky Harbinger, but it will certainly do the trick. I'll play the Praxis Banner here and we'll just uh, sit tight and get ready to play our next invoke. Now I've got four 1-1s one for him to deal with. Marred Shoveler is pretty nice. That's a pretty good one drop. Sinister Opportunist is not going to do a lot. And a Sindel's Gift is a problem, though not an extreme one. We'll probably just invoke here, see if we can find a Bury of the Past. Yeah, that looks the good. Hold great power. Let's put that on the bottom of your deck. Uh, satisfying. 
That was a uh, 1 in 51, I think. <laughs> Go ahead and play the Seed of Impulse. And yeah, let's shuffle. Ah, discarded a new tomorrow. Not the card I want to discard, but I'm good with that. <laughs> okay. So next invoke is going to be getting us hopefully some good stuff. Certainly looking for a better draw of some kind as well. Helm Bloodcaster goes into a place. We're going to invoke here. Oh, I could have tried to do the Amaran Shuffler first in case I wanted to get like a Great Kiln Titan. This looks like Heart of the Vault. No, it's a Torch. Okay, well we pop the Aegis here. And then we have Heart of the Vault on top, which is important. So play Praxis Banner, draw the heart. That gets us a little card advantage. Not too bad. What's to steal the top card of my deck that's possible? We know it's not the heart because we drew it. We'll see if he got anything good. Talir's Intervention silences the 4 or 5, which would make it mostly useless. I think I still want to deal damage to this just in case I get a Torch, or perhaps a Claw of the First Dragon. Um, sadly, I don't have a Bren here, so I can't just play that, but I think that's this still pretty reasonable. Let's go ahead and grab a Shadow here, and we can silence the 4 or 5 to kill it, so feels pretty good. Oh, I should have used the Amaran Shoveler there. That was a mistake. He stole my Bren. Interesting. Talir's Intervention here. Lock that. Feeding time kills this guy, and he's getting some power off of Bren that I don't really want him to have, so we'll probably just uh, claw the first dragon that out. Vara's favor killing our shoveler is also a bit disappointing. Uh, I would like to Heart of the Vault claw Felm Bloodcaster, but I feel like Bren is just uh, offering the Felm deck a bit too much. So we'll just do that, and then we'll Heart of the Vault into this face. Hey, free Bren. Cool. Uh, let's play. At this point, we're into a pretty good mode overall. There's a way that like a Champion of Cunning could kill me, but I'm sitting on so many cards and so many different things at the moment that I'm pretty threatening. He's got to go into reactive mode, and I'm not going to run out of anything, so we're good to go. We're just going to go ahead and attack with every dang thing, because he can't block with Felm Bloodcaster without losing the Bloodcaster to the Claw. Ruthless Stranger takes a dive. I also kind of want to ditch these 1-1s one because they're a bit uh, poor for me if he plays Black Sky Harbinger. Alright, we'll invoke. That activates Bren, which gets us a little bit more power. Great power. We pitched an Excavate, and there's a Great Kiln Titan. Definitely one of the cards I Play the Seed of Impulse to get a little extra power and end my turn. At this point, we should start keeping track of our deck total. 27 at the moment, and 1 Excavate, 2 Excavate. 3 Excavates. 3 Excavates in the Void. If we, we've also pitched our Lumen Reclaimer, so I do need to draw the uh, other Excavate and not pitch it. And if I pitch it in the next uh, Invoke, then we should definitely lay off of the invoke for a little bit. I'm okay with pitching one and just having like 25, 24 cards left. That's not too big a deal. But we are going to need power. to have that Lumen Reclaimer at some point. Okay, I can target my own Heart of the Vault, which I'm pretty into. We did not pitch an Excavate or anything, and we've got a pretty cool moment as well. Heart of the Vault deals 2 damage to the Film Bloodcaster. Film Bloodcaster dies. And then we play a bunch more 1 cost units, some of which may have charge. Keep the Heart of the Vault on top, 
Attack with everything. Nice. I can also uh, buff this alluring ember with the humble instructor, which is cute. All right, so we're looking at uh, Heart of the Vault next turn, plus Vokes if we want them. Sandstorm Titan's looking pretty good. There's a lot to play with here. Permafrost allows us to, well, doesn't do much for us, but uh, it doesn't really hurt us either. We're sitting on so many drops right now. He basically needs a Black Sky Harbinger to fix this problem, so not feeling too unhappy about it. All right, swing with everything. Ah, uh, should I have... Could have buffed the one with the humble instructor. That might have been the better play. But you never know. We might spend all of our power. This deck is very, very good at spending all of its power at every every available opportunity. Heart of the Vault heals two. Great Kiln Titan plays. End my turn. Got a time sigil. Okay, not too bad. And an Annihilate kills our Great Kill. Oh, we could actually bounce it if we wanted to. Uh, I think I'm good, though. Not the least of which, because bouncing Heart of the Vault is one of our key sort of win cons at the moment. Oh, there's the Harbinger. Alright, he's definitely going to gain some life back there. <laughs> okay, well, we have a Sandstorm Titan and a Tildeer's Intervention, so we can bounce and go for shenanigans. Just checking one more time to make sure I don't have four excavates in our void. Okay, no, we're good. Secret Pages plays a little bit of our power. Uh, that would give us a better chance of drawing the excavates. I think what I want to do here is play the long game a little bit. We're going to... <coughs> How active is Bren right now? Plus three power at the moment. We're going to use Tillier's Intervention to bounce the Heart of the Vault. And we're going to play the Heart of the Vault to draw a card. The Great Kiln Titan. Uh, that means I don't get to play Secret Pages this turn, but I do get to attack for six. And then Titan plus Great Kiln gives us lots and lots of Titans. Top card of our deck is a Seed of Impulse. We still haven't found that Excavate, but we know it's in here, and we need it to pick up the Lumen Reclaimer. Strategize. So, opponent's looking for stuff. Sounds like a Celestial Omen, he can pick that as Indel's gift back up, but uh, the main cards that he look is looking for here are answers to my big stuff, and he's probably out of single target removal at this point. Yep, there we go. Yeah, this deck's definitely got like a lot of late game power against the Felm deck. The only card that really troubles you is a Zendil's Gift, and there are a decent amount of ways to pick up a Barry of the Past and get back in on track. So you might lose a little bit of tempo, um, but mostly what you have to make sure you can do is deal with the Champion of Cunning. If you can do that, you're going to be pretty fine against Felm. All right. So, I Felici, we have a Common Cause and a Fire Sigil, but that's not enough power. We got to redraw here. And picking that up is going to be yeah, sort of the way that we want to go. Praxis, Common Cause, Seat, Fire Sigil, and all of that makes for a pretty decent setup. Heart of the Vault would be lovely to play. I'm going to play the Praxis banner here. And we're going to hope the Common Cause gets us the time that we need to play Heart of the Vault. Because Heart of the Vault is a pretty key card. I'm very glad to have the Bury of the Past, but uh, at the moment we're up against Sky Crag, so this could get really scary really fast. Champion of Fury, I think we're just going to silence that. It's too much damage over too much time. This will save us a lot of health. I would prefer to have uh, torches here, but it just just makes more sense to make sure that that's dead. Okay, fire sigil here and a common cause. We'll take the fire sigil. If I can find a sandstorm titan, then we will be able to play common cause for the time. If not, we'll just have to play it, which isn't that big a deal. Tillier's intervention may be used to save us. Torch was definitely a good top deck for me. Start my turn. Trailmaker gets us the necessary this time influence. Common causes power five. I can Tillier's intervention to save the Trailmaker, which helps me out with uh, Heart of the Fall. No blocks there. If he wants to throw a torch at Trailmaker, then we will Tillier's intervention to save it. 
Oh, common cause. Thank you. Okay, so now we just part of the vault, kill the tutu. Suddenly we're looking very, very stable. Great Kiln Titan with a discount is absolutely insane. That's, uh, that's pretty much where I want to be against Skycrag. We disabled the early aggression and still are looking good for the late game. So I think we're really well set up here. Permafrost knocks that out. I can't use uh, that as a blocker here. Like, we just need to play the Titan. Die with honor. All right. Oh, so good. Playing this off the top is fun for card advantage reasons, but obviously Great Kiln into Heart of the Vault just builds our board way better. So we'll do that. End our turn. Kill the Oni Ronin. Instant board. Great times. All right, this one looks pretty decent. Trailmaker into Titan and two invokes. I don't love the two invokes, but it shouldn't be too hard to play with. Like two invokes does mean that we get to invoke at a discount every now and then, which is nice. We, we accumulate invokes a little bit slower. We'll be able to double invoke on occasion. There's, there's some work to be done with that. Ooh, and we have a heart of the vault too. So we use the Trailmaker to get fire. Uh, we are able to play heart very, very quickly. We're also on the Sandstorm Titan. This is basically the perfect hand. Um, we will see if this does everything that it needs to do. <laughs> Bren not being an explorer is very sad, but... This will do the trick. It's not too awful. We'll go ahead and play our Time Sigil here and get a Sandstorm Titan. And then uh, Heart of the Vault is available as well, so... Looks pretty good. My opponent's playing a Lesion stuff, so probably mid-rangey. Uh, we beat mid-rangey stuff pretty handily. There's not a lot of ways that the mid-rangey can mess with us, especially now that we have 6 power, or 5 power, I guess, without the Trailmaker. Probably going to play a Titan of his own. It's fairly common for a Lesion deck at this point. So our Titans can do some back and forth. Ah, he's got a Tempest Grab instead. This is a pretty good card, something I do want to have in the Bren deck on occasion. Doesn't matter too much here, we'll just attack for five. And I think we lead Heart of the Vault because that is just like, it's always useful to lead cards that aren't Invoke so that you can use the Invokes later. Uh, not rely on the randomness until you need the randomness or until you need just extra stuff to supplement your current hand. Okay, Vanish looks good. Claw of the first dragon's fine. If we were playing an invoke deck, deck into like lots and lots of eight drops and ten drops and seven drops, like even more than we're currently doing, then we'd play the invoke first. But as it stands, we actually do rely on Heart of the Vault quite a bit to get some shenanigans going. Invoke enables moment, which is pretty awesome. Um, Claw of the first dragon is still very playable here, though, so I'm not feeling too unhappy about how things are going. Common cause doesn't do anything. Amber Wasteland would gain us life. I think I want to go Common Cause here. Hide the fact that we have a 2 health game card. Play the Claw. There's some damage. Yeah, pretty straightforward, awesome beats. This is the kind of curve that you really, really want in this deck. Alright, next turn we're going to do some Invoking. Unless my opponent forfeits before then. The combination of Claw and Heart of the Vault is always really, really potent in my opinion. Like, most of the time people deal with big practice decks by removing your units one at a time, and uh, once you get too full on board, you just uh, basically have some issues where the units don't function because they harsh rule, and then you sort of run out of the value of Praxis. Claw of the First Dragon really supplements that because it provides two different threats, two different axes, and that means that uh, you're standard control decks have a lot harder time dealing with the card and not only that but when they do deal with that uh, typically after they've emptied out your board it fills up your board again which means that they have to deal with another threat which is really really cool the main issue of course is if they can deal with the card and then also uh, harsh rule at the same time which almost never happens like it's just way too awkward to do so yeah i really like claw in this deck all right, that does it for tonight's brew. Thank you guys so much for watching. We'll be doing more Bren stuff all the way out till, I think, Sunday. This is going to be a Monday through Friday thing, but uh, I got sick, so I didn't get to release as many videos as I want to. Hopefully, we'll get at least three out, and uh, if we feel like we have more Bren brews, we'll certainly be releasing those as well. Here's the B-side for this list, Bren's Blues. Uh, this is just basically the same thing, but with Channel the Tempest. We're actually using Nocturnal Observer to activate Stirring Sand for Titans using Heart of the Vault and Great Kiln Titan and Sandstorm 
Phantom Titan so that we can recur those cards and use the, tra the Explorer's Trailmaker and Nocturnal Observer to sort of help out with the whole list. Uh, but this is, uh, yeah, this is pretty fun stuff. I found this a little bit less reliable just because it's hard to get the four influence for Channel the Tempest together, but it is nonetheless quite exciting and uh, delightful times, and Channel the Tempest really will get you a lot of places when it comes to getting your aggression on, so you can really do some cool, cool stuff with it. Uh, yeah, uh, have some fun with it if you like, and uh, we'll be back with a really, really interesting one. Uh, I am actually really excited about this next one. It's going to be a cool, like, sort of aggro-type Bren deck, and yeah, it's, it's going to be lots of fun. See you guys then. Have a really good night, and uh, feel free to like or subscribe next time. Bye.